Hi, my name is Madeline. And in this watercolor tutorial today, we are going to paint this paint your style reference photo from last week. I'm going to start off by going over our supplies. I'm painting with some new handmade watercolor paper that I recently got. Um, it's from Blue Pine Arts. It's this really nice um, three and a half by four inch size, the perfect size for minis. I have been really enjoying painting with them. I want to go over the brushes that I'm going to use. So I'm going to be wetting the front and the back of the paper. Um, that's my Princeton Mottler brush. I have been using it to um, wet my paper um, on everything. This is um, an Escoda Ultimo brush. It's a size 10. It's kind of like a big mop brush to help me get the color on. Um, for that first wash and then I'm going to be primarily using this etcher round six for most of the tutorial. I have a Da Vinci um, colonial liner for the grass up in the front. I use a size four and a size zero. It gets um, really nice long thin fine lines and then I recently got a new um, liner brush. It's from Princeton Select. It is like the tiniest liner I've ever seen. It The size is a 10-0 and I've been obsessed with painting um, my birds with them. It literally gets me like the thinnest line. So this is my newest obsession. Um, it's a super cheap brush. I got it for like three dollars. Anyways, I just had to share because I'm super excited about this brush um, and then the last two brushes are also new brushes that I recently picked up um, one is a deerfoot brush and the other is a mini mop but they so it, it kind of I guess this looks like a deer's foot I guess that's why they call it that but it gives me really nice tree textures um, and this one kind of looks like the brush that I used my eyeshadow, I mean I put my eyeshadow on with, but let me show you the textures that I can get with these two brushes because I'm all about um, sort of getting, I'm all about tree brushes, um, like a brush that you can sort of use unconventionally to make like tree foliage. So I'm wetting it and I'm just gonna grab, um, I'm gonna grab this purple just because for effect I want you to see kind of I want it to stand out but yeah so I just kind of like smush it onto my paper and you get these like really nice kind of like fungi tree brush strokes that you wouldn't really be able to get with like a normal brush so I have been in love with sort of using brushes like this to kind of help me paint like trees or just like grassy areas um, and then the other brush is just a tiny bit smaller but I get kind of like a very similar effect um, I'm gonna grab some of this like maroon color so you can see that it's similar to the deer foot brush but it has like a smaller footprint so I kind of use it to build a color those are roughly the brushes that I'm going to be using and yeah I'm just really I'm really into these like tree brushes so I had to show you kind of what I can do with it um, now I want to swatch out some of the colors for you so um, this first color is um, buff titanium but as most of you guys know recently um, I guess it was like a week now Addison and Segwick my favorite um, paint maker she dropped a new palette called the dragonfly set so a lot of these colors are actually from that set this color is actually called blue limonium I'm always pronouncing that wrong but it's a very very pale um, blue that I really like for my skies um, and this next color is I think small blue um, it's kind of like a cooler version of ultramarine, but if you don't have it, you can use ultramarine too. I use it to sort of paint that background um, mountain right there. And then the next color that I use is Baltic Seaport. It's kind of like a warm blue. Um, I use it to paint 
some of the background mountains. And then this is indigo. It's a darker blue. And then these are um, the colors from the dragonfly set from Carrie. Um, so the first color that I use is Pond Hawk. It kind of is, it has some shimmer to it, but it's kind of like a perlene green. Um, a little bit lighter, but it has a very similar color um, to the water in the reference photo. And this color is called Stream Blue It. Um, it's kind of, I would say it's like a sap green-ish color. And the next color that I use um, for this front area right here, this is called Seaside Dragonlet. It's like a very light turquoise color. Um, and like I said, these colors from her palette just really match the reference photo. So I'm just, I'm using all of them. Um, this color right here is Spruce. I use this um, to paint some of the grasses in the foreground. And then this is called Canned Peas. It's a warm olive -y yellow um, by Stay Kiwi. And then the last green that I use, this is called Three Brothers. Um, and it's kind of like another light sap green-ish color. Um, and then I use a little bit of shimmer for the front, um, that area right behind the grass because I want there to be a little bit of a shimmer and I'm all about you know some subtle shimmer so these are the colors that I'm going to be using for the tutorial today feel free to use whatever you have um, or whatever colors look similar to these swatches so like I mentioned earlier I'm going to be wetting the front and the back um, of this paper and Primarily because it's so small, um, I don't really want to use, um, sorry, not because it's so small, because it's like handmade and it has a kind of like softer texture. I don't really want to introduce a lot of masking tape to it because I don't want it to accidentally pull. So I have been painting with these um, beautiful handmade papers and I've just been wetting the front and the back. Um, it is not my most favorite way to do wet on wet but i think it might be because i don't have a lot of experience i don't have a lot of experience um doing this method so i guess um as i'm doing it a little bit more i do actually really like how it looks um how the watercolor goes up to the very edge so anyways um what you saw me do was i wet the front and the back and I'm wiping off the sides so that there's any pooling on the edge and then I'm just going to take a um, paper towel and kind of press down on it to sort of get rid of any air bubbles and then I'm grabbing my um, flat brush again and I'm just wetting it one last time um, and then I'm wiping the sides and it it will it will stay wet for a very long time I don't personally need it to stay wet for super long, but I know now that it's summer, people are having a harder time keeping their paper wet um, because of the heat. So if that's you, I think this is a very good alternative um, if you're wanting to do wet on wet, but um, you're struggling with sort of working against um, the paper drying. So I'm grabbing some of that really light blue color and I'm going to start dropping in that color for our sky. And now I'm going to grab some small blue. Um, you can use ultramarine also. And I'm going to add um, just a little bit more color to our sky. I don't want the blue to go all the way down because I want that foreground to have the reflection of the lake, so I'm gonna stop right there. And then I'm gonna grab just a really tiny bit of yellow. Um, if, you have buff if you have buff titanium, that's um, what I would use. Um, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of yellow um, for that sandy foreground. Now 
Now I'm gonna switch over to my round six brush. It's a synthetic brush. It doesn't have a whole lot of water because my paper is already wet. Um, I don't want to introduce a lot of water as I'm painting um, this background mountain. Um, so I start off with a little bit of lavender, but I realize that it kind of looks too similar to the um, sky already. So I grab a little bit of um, Baltic Seaport, which is that warmer blue, and I'm just sort of painting that soft uh, mountain that we have in the background. And I'm not using a whole lot of paint um, because I don't want it to dry too dark. And then now I am sort of just lifting a little bit of the blue sky for um, that sandy um, shore area that we have. Now I'm going to grab Pond Hawk that I have and I'm going to start painting the water. And so one of my favorite parts of this reference photo is this lake reflection that we have right in front of the mountains. It's so pretty. Uh, I'm, grad I'm grabbing that lighter turquoise green now um, because as we get closer to the foreground, the water gets lighter and lighter. Um, and I didn't do the best to preserve the lightness of it. Um, the colors that I'm using are kind of dark and so I wish I hadn't used so many layers, so I'm gonna kind of tell you what I wish I did differently. Now I'm gonna grab that, that darker, um, sap green color and I'm going to start painting the shoreline um, right above kind of where the lake is. Again, like I said, try not to add too much because that um, reflection right there is on the lighter side. I'm going to grab my hot air tool and I'm just going to lightly dry the center of our landscape. I'm not going to dry the whole thing. Um, I just want to dry it enough so that I can start painting the mountains. Now I'm going to grab my round six brush and I'm going to pick up some indigo and we're going to start painting the mountain on the left hand side. And I'm just going to come downwards and you notice that the mountains sort of higher up are blue and then as we get closer to the lake the mountains turn more green um, because there's probably closer trees and stuff. Now back to that darker green. 
um, that I used to paint the shore. Um, and by using the same colors on the mountains that we did for the lake, it's going to create kind of like that harmonious, harmonious feel. And then I'm going to start painting the, mount the mountains on the right. And on the right side, you see the outline of more trees. And so I'm sort of like varying my brush stroke. So it's not as smooth as I did on the left, um, but it has a little bit more texture um, kind of to show the tree tops. Now I'm going to grab that deer foot brush and I'm going to slowly start to build the depth that we have with the mountains and the trees um, right at the shoreline at the base of the mountains. So I'm grabbing more of that yellowy green to um, give the impression that there is, you know, trees right there. Um, but I want to vary it with different different colors of green so that it doesn't look too flat. And I like how that looks and I'm going to start drying our paper and this is kind of where it gets tricky because once you once there's like a lot more water and paint um, when you're drying it, the paper naturally is going to buckle. So what I did was I just used Holbein soft tape, which is known to be really gentle. And I sort of taped down like the very tiniest edge of the paper. And then I sort of um, used my hot air tool to sort of flatten it. I do dry the front and the back because if you don't dry the back, then you might sort of get more warping. And then you can see I'm sort of like flattening it as we go. And um, so it's completely dry now. I'm going to grab the deer foot brush again and I'm going to grab more green and I'm going to continue to build um, those trees that we see. I also added some indigo to this green mixture so that it would stand out and be a little bit darker than the mountains behind it. Now I want to paint that bright um, piece of shoreline that we see. I'm using t um, Buff Titanium. This is actually by A Gallo. I love it. It's like super thick and creamy. I'm using my round six brush and this is again wet on dry. So I want to I want to get that um, shore to really stand out, you know, in contrast to all the dark greens and blues that we have. I purposely tried to leave a little bit of this area um, lighter, like I didn't want to cover it completely with the green because I feel like it would be hard to sort of create that light if there was a darker layer of green behind this. Now I'm going to grab that other tree brush, it's the mini mop, and I'm going to grab more concentrated green and um, we're going to paint some more trees sort of um, right there.
The key here is to vary your greens. Um, I use a lot of different greens in this piece because the varying colors of green are going to give us um, sort of that like depth and reality that it isn't just one flat piece. Now I'm gonna grab more tape and I'm gonna tape it down because I'm gonna um, work more on the lake reflection and I'm having a hard time sort of holding the paper down. So I'm just gonna tape it down so that I don't have to hold it down. Um, I go a little bit too dark right here on the lake reflection. So if you aren't painting along and you're just watching this, I would use the greens that I used, but I would I would dilute it more so that it's um, a little bit lighter and more watered down so that you can kind of keep the light in the reflection. Coming in with the same green um, that we used to paint the water earlier. This is, I haven't quite got the hang of all the names yet. Stream Blue It. So it's like the sap green-ish looking green. And I'm just trying to create a little bit more color in um, the water right here. And then I'm going to come in with a wet brush and um, sort of even out those lines so that we don't have any hard lines. And then I'm going to grab some Pond Hawk and I'm going to keep going down. And to soften up that line, this is just a clean brush and I'm sort of slowly dragging that color down so we get that color gradient that we see in the reference photo. Now I'm going to get a hot air tool and I'm going to dry that. So that bright strip of land is, is not standing out as much as I want it to. So I'm gonna mix some um, Dr. PH Martin's white gouache along with the white titanium, I mean the buff titanium, to get the seashore to look a little bit brighter. And I'm going to come in and I'm just going to paint that um, shoreline again. And yeah, you can already see adding in that white gouache. Oh my God, it makes a huge difference. It looks so much brighter and I want there to be that contrast between the mountains and the water.
Now I'm going to completely dry our paper. Now I want to work a little bit on creating some of the reflection that we see on the water from the mountains. I'm going to use some buff titanium right here, sort of very close to the foreground. And then as we move back up, I'm going to be using a watery mixture of the same colors that we used to paint the water beneath this. By that layer and then now I'm gonna grab my liner brushes and I'm gonna start painting the grasses that we see in the foreground and my advice would be to use um, a liner brush because that helps to get really fine lines and um, if you have more than one to use two different sizes because that will help sort of vary the, the um, thicknesses the thickness of the grass, the grassy blades, um, and I'm using sort of a few different greens to sort of give it like a really natural look. The color that I'm grabbing now is called Spruce. It is a cooler green and I am using it in contrast to that warmer olive green um, just so that I just find when you use 
multiple greens that it just kind of looks better than using the same green. And then on the left hand side right here there are like some longer blades with some flowers on it and so i am painting that right now and the flowers just kind of look like um little dots on the blade of grass I'm trying my best to make this area feel very full and I'm trying not to leave too many white spaces.
I'm just going to dry these grasses. We are almost done with our landscape and the last thing I like to do is paint a flock of birds because that's my favorite way to finish off a landscape and you can see just how fine um, this brush is. I'm like so obsessed. And my favorite tips for painting birds are to use a dark color. So this is indigo. You could also use Payne's gray or neutral tint. And you want to get a very diluted mixture. And you want, when you look at the tip of your brush, you don't want to see any like paint, like clump of paint. You just want to see just the brush. So if you see kind of like a thick, little glob of paint then you're not going to get a fine line and that's it we will dry this layer and once everything is dry our landscape is done i would also be very careful pulling the tape off um, just to make sure that there isn't like a tiny chunk that's still wet Otherwise, the paper could rip. Like my very top left corner, it ripped a little bit. I really hope you enjoyed painting this landscape with me. If you liked this tutorial, please hit the like button. It's a really small way to help my channel grow. And if you enjoy my content, use the following QR codes to either find me on Patreon or Instagram.